Hello, in this video we are going to talk about the Unit 5 Part 2 test. Um, on this Part 2, uh, the first thing that I'm going to do, this one is the exact question that's on your Part 2 test, so we're not going to actually solve it out. I'm just going to point you in the direction to go. Um, for this first part, when you want to, it asks you to draw the 30, 60, 90 triangle and to label the angle measures um, and to use the side relationships uh, to show that these trig identities are true. So to draw the triangle, the 30, 60, 90 triangle, if you'll go back to lesson 506, all right, that talks about the 30, 60, 90 triangle and what we know about those trig identities, okay? For, um, for parts B and C, to prove that these are true, all you're going to do is just solve them out, okay? So um, you can review lesson 504 to help you, or you can just solve them out, right? Just in your calculator, figure out what tangent 60 is, what sine 60 is, divided by cosine 60, and just show your work, right? Here, find the sine of 30 and square it, the cosine of 30 and square it, add them together to show that it would equal 1, all right? So that's all you're doing on part, on number 1. Okay, so for number 2 here, it says that a surveyor is shooting a line to a point on a tree 18 meters from his current position. After rotating his surveying instrument 35 degrees to the left, he shoots another line to a point on a fence post 12 meters away. Okay, here it says determine the distance between the point on the tree and the point on the fence post. So here we're finding X right here. It says show the appropriate formula, substitutions, and work. Give the distance to the nearest hundredth meter. Now, the thing that you can get confused on here is that if you just were to look at this picture, it looks like a right triangle. Now, it actually is not a right triangle. It doesn't tell us anywhere in this, uh, in this problem that this is a right triangle, so we cannot assume that it's a right triangle. That means that we can't use Pythagorean theorem, and we also can't use the sine, cosine, or tangent to find this missing side. What we're going to have to do is use our law of sines and, or law of cosines to figure out which one, um, to figure out which, what this side length is going to be. All right, so um, on this one, okay, so and if you looked at the, if you were at our, at the Class Connect um, that we did just here recently on uh, May, was today, May 15th, um, then we talked about how we determine which sign or which the law of signs or the law of cosines. We just, we figured out which one, um, how we would decide to use each one. And it has to do with our, what information we're given here. So if we look, we're given a side an angle, and then a side. So if you would go back and look at that formula chart that I gave you, side angle side is using the law of cosines, okay? So the law of cosines was the one that was like a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine a. All right, so on this one, what we want to do is figure out which, um, which law we want or which part of the law of cosines because there's three of them. One starts with a squared, one starts with b squared, and one starts with c squared. Now, what I do, here we have triangle FST. A lot of times with the law of cosines, it's easier if you just mark these out and relabel them. Now, it doesn't matter. You can label them A, B, or C as long as you label the opposite sides accordingly. So if we're going to label this angle A, then this has to be side A. If we're going to label this B, then this has to be side B. If we're going to label this angle C, then it has to be side C. Okay, so here we want to find this missing side. We want to find B, and it's given us the angle B. So the one that we want to use, the law of cosines that we want to use, is the one that has cosine B in the problem. All right, so the one that we're going to use is B squared equals A squared plus C squared minus 2AC cosine B. 
All right. And um, if you're, and like I said, this is not, these, the, the test is exactly this problem. It's just different numbers. Okay. So if you're going to try to do, if you're going to try to follow my steps, make sure that you label your angles the same way I did, right? Label the F is A, S is B, and T is C. Otherwise, you won't be able to choose this formula. You'll have to choose a different one. Okay, so now we're going to plug in here. So we have B squared, right? We don't know what that is. That's our unknown. So we say B squared equals A squared. So that would be 18. So we have 18 squared plus C squared. That would be 12 squared minus 2 times A. Okay, side A is 18 times C, which is 12 and then cosine B, and the cosine here is 35 degrees. So we have cosine 35 degrees. So now we have B squared, all right, and here now we want to find, uh, we want to find 18 squared, so we're going to take 18 times 18. Which is 324. 12 squared is 144. Then we're going to take 2 times 18 times 12, which is 432. And then it's times cosine 35 degrees. So what we're going to have to do here is go get our calculator. And remember what we talk about when you use your calculator you want to make sure you go to mode and make sure, see how my degree is highlighted right there? You want to make sure that your degrees are highlighted right there. So now we're going to take 432 and we're going to times it by cosine 35. And that's going to give us, we're just going to say 354, okay? That's what we're going to use as our, um, just round it up to the nearest whole number. So 354 minus 354. So now we're just going to go, and remember, addition, right, order of operations, we've got to go left to right. So we take 324 plus 144 and then subtract 354. And that gives us B squared equals 114. So now all we have to do is just take the square root of 114 and we get that B equals 10.677. So um, we're just going to say 10.7. So I know that the length, right, the distance from the tree to the fence post is 10.7 meters. And that would be the answer for part A. Okay. Oh, and I guess we can round that up to 11 is what I did. Okay. So now we know that this is 11 meters. Okay. So now, okay, it tells us to use the law of sines to find the measure of angle T. Okay. So now we could use the law of cosines to find the measure of angle T because we have enough information, but the law of sines is much easier, right? And what I'm going to do is go ahead and re, you know, continue, let's rename them still ABC. Okay, so remember, the law of sines is that sine A over A equals sine B over B equals sine C over C. And when you're using the law of sines, you're only going to use two of these, right? Sine A over A equals sine B over B or sine A over A equals sine C over C. Um, so in this case, we have 35 degrees, which is B, right? So we know we're going to use sine B over B. And then it wants us to find the measure of angle T, which in this case we've renamed C, right? So we're going to use sine C over C. So now we just plug these in, right? Sine B is going to be sine of 35. And then side B is 11. And then sine C we don't know, right? So we're going to say that it's sine C. Now the opposite, right, C over here is going to be 12. So now we're going to cross multiply here. So I'm coming over here. So we have 12 times sine 35 equals 11 times sine C. 
So then we divide by 11 on both sides. And so now we can go and just put that directly into our calculator. So here, if we take our calculator, we can take 12 times sine 35. And then we're going to divide that by 11 which gives us 0.6257. sine C is going to equal 0.6257. So we have that sine C equals 0.6257. Now we want the angle measure, right? So here it just gives us a ratio, right? That tells us what the ratio of the sides is. Since we have the ratio, that means we can use the inverse, right? If we take the inverse of sine and plug in 0.6257, it's going to give us a degree measure. So again, we're going to go back to our calculator here. We're going to say the inverse of sine, and we're going to put in 0.6257. And that's going to give us an angle measure of about 39 degrees. So we're going to call that 39 degrees. So we know that this angle measure right here is 39 degrees. Okay, so now we know that this is 39 degrees. The last thing that it says to do is to find the measure of angle F. All right, so now what we can do here is we have two angle measures already, right? So we can use what we know about triangles, right? That you add up a triangle, it equals 180. So we're going to take 35 plus 39, which is 74. And then we're going to take 180 minus 74, and we're going to get 106. So this is actually 106 degrees. Okay, so this is what I was talking about. Don't get thrown off by the picture, right? Because this is actually an obtuse triangle, right? It has this big 106 degree angle. So, you know, make sure that uh, we follow the instructions and don't use Pythagorean theorem here. Okay, this says uh, one method you can use to determine whether a triangle is a right triangle given three side lengths is to apply the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. Right, so if we wanted to prove that this was a right triangle, right, and that uh, we could just say 36 squared plus 48 squared and then find the square root, right, we could use Pythagorean theorem. But alternately, we could use trig ratios. So what we want to do is it wants us to show that the triangle is a right triangle by using a trig ratio. So we want to be sure to show all of our work and reasoning. So what we have to do here, if 62, if this was a right triangle, 62 is the longest side. That means that this is going to be the right angle right here. So what we want to do is find these two angles right here. Okay, so what we're going to do first, let's find angle B. Okay, if we want to find angle B, then we can use the opposite, right? And here, it doesn't matter, right? You can just choose two sides right here. Let's use opposite and adjacent, okay? So since it's a right triangle, we can use SOHCAHTOA, right? Remember, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So if I use opposite over adjacent, right, then I'm going to use tangent. So the tangent of angle B is going to be 36 over 48. All right. So remember, if I want to find the angle, that means I'm going to have to use inverse tangent. So inverse tangent 36 over 48 is going to give me this side length right here. So we're going to go out to our calculator and we're going to find the inverse of the tangent we're going to put 36 over 48 in here, and that's going to give us about 36.9. So we'll use that, 36.9. So that angle measure is 36.9 degrees. Okay, so here what I would do then is I would use the same thing. I would go ahead and use opposite over adjacent again. 
and use inverse tangent, right? So if we use inverse tangent for this one, opposite over adjacent is going to be 48 over 36. So again, we're going to go back out to our calculator. We're going to say the inverse tangent of 48 over 36 is going to give us about 53.1. Okay, and now all I have to do is add up these two angles, right? If it's, a, if it's a right triangle, then they should add up to be 90. So we take 36.9 plus 53.1, and that does, in fact, give us 90. So we know that these are, um, we know that this is a right triangle. Okay. Now, I want everybody to make sure you know, you don't have to use tangent. You can use tangent if you want. But since we have all three of the sides, you could use sine, cosine, or tangent, whichever one you want. Just make sure to use the inverse in order to find the angle. And that would be the end of your part two test. Good luck.